Hi everyone, my name is Corey Hart. I'm an education specialist with Vermont Fish and Wildlife. And today we're going to be focusing on deer. Uh, this is actually part of a four-part series uh, called Scat and Tracks, uh, where we each week we're going to go over, or episode, we're going to be going over a different species. So the four species we're going to be highlighting throughout this little course uh, is going to be deer, a bobcat, snowshoe hare, and raccoon. Uh, so each episode I'm going to talk to you a little bit about their, their habitats, their habits, uh, some biological factors about them, their scats, their tracks, how to ID them. And then after the episode, what we're going to have you do is go out with either your teacher or your family and look for sign of those species. To be successful though in the woods and actually be able to uh, look for sign of these animals, you need to know a little bit about their habitat first. First we're going to start talk about what Vermont Fish and Wildlife is. Uh, the mission of the Department of Fish and Wildlife is a conservation of all fish, wildlife, and plant, uh, plants and their habitats for the people of Vermont. And that means we're responsible not just for deer and brook trout, but we're responsible for everything that's out there. That's everything from things like mice or woodchucks, uh, birds, all of those species we're actually responsible for. Uh, but you might have noticed in that statement I said a word called habitat. And it may be a word you're not familiar with. Uh, and habitat is something all animals need. Even we need a habitat. And a habitat is basically it's our home. So just like I have a home and you have a home as well, where everything you need is there, animals also have a home. And their home may vary. So what a deer needs to survive and what their habitat is and what a bear needs are two very different things. Uh, the four things that all species need is first, we all need food. So you probably got up this morning and had breakfast. Animals need to do the same thing. They need to eat throughout the day. So everything needs food. They all need water. So we need food, water, and we need shelter. So shelter comes in many different forms. For us, it, it's a nice warm house. Uh, for deer, uh, it could be a nice tree to lay under to uh, keep the snow and things off. Bears, it could be a den. All animals have a different types of shelter. Uh, but same general concept. And then we also need something called space, or the arrangement. Uh, and for different animals, they need different, different types of space. Uh, so for us, for example, for, for me personally, I like all my food, water, my shelter, all to be under one roof, all, everything in my house. Uh, but a species like a bobcat, which we're going to talk about in a later episode, likes to have its food, water, shelter, all kind of dispersed over a really long area, because it likes to travel a lot. Uh, but for other animals, like snowshoe hare or cottontail rabbits, they need their uh, food, water, and shelter close together, where they can easily travel to it. They don't want to wander long distances. Uh, so all animals need the same things, but they might need it spaced out differently. Uh, the types of food they eat might be different as well. Uh, and today we're going to be focusing on white-tailed deer. Uh, so when we're looking for deer, or if I'm, I'm trying to find deer in the wild, well, to get started and have any sort of luck, I need to understand, well, what it eats. Because if I just wander into the woods aimlessly and I start looking for deer, I might have luck, I might see sign of deer, but my chances of actually seeing one is going to be a lot better if I know what it's eating. And that changes throughout the seasons, because different food are available at different times of the year. Uh, for example, in the fall this year, we had a lot of acorns in the woods. Acorns aren't necessarily available all year round. So in the fall, I might be looking for deer near oak trees, especially if there's a lot of acorns. If there's a season where in the fall, let's say maybe there wasn't a lot of acorns in the woods, or I'm near an area where there's a nice big field like I am today, they might be eating things like grass. And we'll show you in a little bit where actually where the deer, you can see on the snow behind me, have actually been eating this grass that are out here all over the place. They've been in this field. Uh, uh, their, uh, their food also changes throughout the year, as I mentioned before. So in the springtime, what they're eating uh, during the fall might not be readily available. So they might start eating things like buds. And that buds are right before like a leaf is about to, to grow on a tree. It would be that, that bit right there. And they're going to be eating things like that. And that's actually something we call browse. And you can see it, if I'm looking for deer sometimes, you'll see where they actually clipped off uh, branches and things like that. Winter, though, their habitat needs completely change, especially in Vermont. 
In Vermont, we have a lot of snow. On the ground right now, I only have about an inch, and that's not really gonna affect deer very much. But let's think if it's middle of winter, it's really cold, and I have two feet of snow on the ground. That's gonna really affect the deer. In the wintertime, deer habitat actually changes, and they need to go into what's called a wintering yard or a wintering area. Uh, and what that is, is if there's too much snow on the ground, uh, let's say there's a foot, foot and a half of snow, it's really cold. The deer need an area where they can go where there's not a lot of snow. And there's still area, uh, plenty of food available for them. Uh, so they'll go into a place where there's a lot of pines. And a lot of times it'll be a lot of deer go to the same spot. So in a wintering yard or a wintering area, there could be 20, 30, 40 deer all in the same area. And what they're doing is they're taking cover together. Inside those yards, those pine trees are keeping the snow out, so it's a lot easier for them to walk around. And they'll spend, depending on how bad the winter is, they could be there for a month to two months. And then when the winter starts to recede, they'll kind of go back out to the, find other types of habitat. You might have heard the phrase before, box and does. And what a buck is, a buck is a male deer or a boy deer. A doe is a female deer or a girl deer. And typically, a uh, buck deer are gonna have, they're gonna be the ones with the antlers. Uh, so this is a forked antler, and then I also have a spiked antler in my hand as well. Uh, female deer, or does, don't have antlers. Uh, but bucks actually don't have antlers all year long. They actually lose them, and they grow them back. So during winter, what actually happens is they'll shake them off, they'll lose their antlers, and throughout the winter, if I was to look at two deer, I might not know that that's a buck in front of me, because it doesn't have its antlers. Uh, but during the spring or the rest of the year, it's going to grow those antlers back. And come the fall, you'll see these nice big antlers on that deer. In the winter, same thing happens. It loses antlers again, and it grows back a new pair of antlers uh, next year. When we're talking about bucks, uh, specifically a lot of people think about what's called the rut. And the rut is what's referred to as the mating season. And that happens during... Uh, usually late October, November. Uh, the exact time is different every year because it revolves a little bit around temperatures, things like that. The rut is when deer are gonna be out there and they're actually mating. And the, butts, the bucks use a lot of energy uh, trying to find does and mate with them. And they use different techniques as well uh, to locate them. Uh, they're also gonna be doing things called sparring. Uh, and bucks can be very territorial. And if there's another buck nearby, it might fight the other buck trying to win. Uh, so they'll go fight each other with their antlers. So you see this one has fairly large antlers. Uh, and if it has a much smaller buck, most likely the buck with the larger antlers would win because they're a much stronger, stronger deer. Other ways uh, during the rut that you'll see signs are going to be things like uh, what's referred to as a scrape. Uh, and scrape is basically an area where the, the deer will actually scuff up the ground and leave scent. And then does will come by and tend those scrapes, meaning they'll leave some scent and the buck will come back, it'll sniff, look for things like that, and then it'll follow the doe sign and chase that doe down. You also find things that are called rubs. And a rub is a deer marking its territory uh, during the rut. And what a rub is, it would be a tree branch, or a tree, uh, that's all scraped up around it. And that would be the deer taking its antlers and just scuffing it up. And kind of peeling that bark off. Those two types of sign, though, I'm only going to typically find during the rut. Uh, this time of year, though, when you're watching this video, it's probably going to be January or February. I'm not going to find scrapes or ruts. Or rubs. Uh, it's possible you'll find a rub from earlier in the season. So the antlers on bucks are actually used uh, for mating displays or for sparring. Uh, they also do it to, to mark ground or mark uh, what's called a scent rub, uh, things like that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, these are two fairly small antlers that I have in my hand. Uh, but if two deer were sparring or they were fighting over ground or territory, you, would, you might hear this. That was not the best example because I only have a spike and a fork with me. Uh, but if it was a larger deer, you'd hear, hear them going after each other and fighting. And hunters will actually use uh, 
fake antlers are real ones that they're going back and forth to try to entice a buck to them during hunting season. And that kind of gets us into the talk a little bit about how we manage our deer herd we have in Vermont. We have quite a lot of deer in Vermont and we actually manage them through hunting. And the reason we have a hunting season is a couple different reasons. Uh, first, it allows, well, if I was a hunter, it allows me to go out and get a nice healthy meal uh, for my family or myself. But it also allows me to help, help to control the population. As with any species, if we have too many of one species, it starts to see negative impacts. Uh, so with deer, one of the problems we have is they actually, if we have too many, they'll go out and they'll overbrowse, which means they eat all the buds off the trees, and then we're not able to have really healthy forests. Uh, so hunting helps to kind of keep the population under control. And in Vermont, we're actually allowed to harvest uh, four deer annu annually. So we're allowed one buck, and then three or four does, depending on how I get there, but only a total of four deer. One of the ways hunters actually help us manage the herd and keep it healthy is during uh, rifle season, if I was a successful hunter and I harvested a buck, uh, what I can actually do is I can turn in a tooth. So when I go to a check station, which is an area I would bring my deer to be, be checked over and tagged, uh, what they'll do is they'll take uh, one of the lower teeth. And with that teeth, what they're going to do is they're actually going to uh, put, send it to a lab and they're going to find out how old it is. And what they're able to do with it is when they look at that tooth, there's actually rings on that tooth. And you might have looked at a tree that was cut before. I took a stump and I cut it in half and you see the rings on a tree. We can do the exact same thing with a deer tooth. And each ring tells us how old it is. So if I see five rings, I have a five-year-old deer in front of me. Uh, there's other ways we can do it as well, where we look at the wear on the teeth. Uh, but that's a little bit harder to do, uh, because we're looking at how, how much it rubbed its teeth, uh, how much plaque buildup there is, and things like that. Uh, so the most accurate one is to actually look at the rings on the tooth as well, uh, just like we would do if I was using a tree stump. It's a little bit different because it's a tooth, but, but it's the same general concept. And you might think, we've always had deer in Vermont. Well, that's actually not entirely true. There was a point where due to uh, over harvesting and poor habitat, so we didn't always have these trees. At one point we actually went and cut almost all the trees down and there was farmland and this was a long time ago, 100 or so years ago. Uh, but we actually were to the point where almost, there was almost no deer in Vermont. We still had, there was a few, but not very many. Uh, and then, once we started, uh, we had the Fish and Wildlife Agency came into form. Uh, then we started having regulations. And those regulations made it so you couldn't go out there and shoot as many deer as you wanted. Uh, we also focused on habitat work. So making it so that there's proper habitat for deer and so that they could really thrive. And once we started doing those things, the population came back. And now we have ample deer across Vermont. I'm sure you've seen deer all over. Uh, just today, where we're standing, there's deer all over the place right behind me or their tracks are, and I'm sure the deers are, deer are right back there in the forest. Uh, what we're gonna focus on now a little bit is we're gonna talk about how we would actually find a deer, or what some signs of deer, I should say, are things I would be looking for. All right, so we've been out here tracking, and one of the common signs that I'll actually find deer in the wintertime, because it shows up really good on white snow, is gonna be deer urine. Uh, you'll most likely, almost definitely for that matter, have deer tracks nearby it as well. Uh, but you'll see it shows up really good on snow. And I found some deer urine right here. You see all the tracks around it as well. The tracks are hard to see because the snow has been melting. But you can kind of still see the outline of those tracks as well. Uh, where they've been feeding actually around and under this apple tree. So we've already seen the urine. We've seen some tracks. Other sign that I'd be looking for would be deer scat, also referred to as poop. Uh, but scat is just kind of a fancy word that we use when we're talking about, about poop. Uh, but deer scat is typically about the size of a raisin. And we have some right here. So this stuff, I actually had to set down because this is, this is replica scat. Uh, so I'm able to pick it up. Uh, the actual deer scat I, I found earlier, there wasn't enough of it to really show you on camera. There was only small little bits that I was able to find today. Sometimes you'll get a nice perfect pile like this. Other times you'll just get a few, few little pieces. Uh, but that's another sign that we look for. And again, you're going to have deer tracks around it. 
Uh, but because the snow has been melting right now, you really can't see these tracks that well. They're not really showing up. So with the tracks I have right here, I wouldn't be able to really see the direction of travel very well. Uh, if I had a much better track, I'd be able to define the direction of travel by actually looking at its toes. So now that I've gone out and I found a track, now it's time to figure out, well, what direction is that deer traveling in? Because just because I found a track, I'm not quite done yet. I might want to know uh, where it's going. And the way I actually do that is this is a replica track that's in my hand. Uh, and this will kind of give you a good idea because it's a nice visual, is direction of travel is going to be the direction the toes are pointing. So if I'm looking at a track and you see one end, like one side of it, it's like really pointy and you can really see defined toes, those toes are pointing to the direction that deer was traveling. And then if you're trying, let's say you're hunting or something like that and you're tracking a deer, you'd obviously want to follow it the direction it's going and you would track it in that direction. Now, what I'd like all, everyone to do is either with your teacher or with your parent or guardian is I want you to spend some time outside and actually go and try to find sign, for, sign of deer. And you could do this in your yard. You could go to a state park, a wildlife management area, or really any property that, that's open to the public, like a town park, anywhere like that. You'd be amazed the places across Vermont where you'll find deer sign. Even places and cities, you'll see deer sign. Uh, but remember, we need to follow some common uh, practices when we're out there. And what that's referred to as LNT or leave no trace, uh, which everyone that goes outside should be practicing. Leave no trace basically means that I want to leave an area better than how I found it. So let's say I packed, uh, I packed a candy bar for lunch or a sandwich. You're going to bring your wrappers and all of, all of that stuff back with you. Uh, another principle to keep in mind or a common courtesy thing is if I'm out there with a big class and we're all searching and I find a track, call, you can call everyone over to look, uh, but you want to make sure when you come over that you're spread out. You don't want to impact all on one area and you also don't want to step on that, that track so everyone can still view it together. Uh, once you've found a track, it'd be a good idea to actually sketch it or you find scat, uh, bring a notebook with you and actually sketch that. And then if you don't know what it is, you can always bring it back and look it up. Uh, other helpful things that I bring with you would be track ID cards. Because just because I'm looking for deer, I might not find deer tracks. I could find coyote tracks or other species out there as well. And having a track ID card will help me to narrow it down. Uh, a camera also helps. Uh, and that will allow me to take a picture of it. And if I'm not quite sure and even can't figure out what a track ID card, maybe I can go back home and look it up on the internet later and figure out what it is, or get a, get a general idea, because we have a lot of different species in Vermont. Uh, next week, or in the next episode, when you join us again, uh, we're going to be focusing on bobcats, and talking all about bobcats and how to find them in Vermont. Uh, but for now, I want you to go out there and spend some time looking for deer sign.